All right, I have had this bunch of uh, power resistors sitting around in a plastic bag for years. I think I got them as some sort of grab bag special ages ago. They are all 470 ohm 5 watt resistors, um, almost certainly wire wound inside of a ceramic um, block. And there are 17 of them. And I thought it might be useful to arrange these in some sort of a matrix where I can connect them in series or parallel to provide um, various loads, um, especially for AC circuits where my DC electronic load can't be used. You know, they're 470 ohms. If I put a bunch in parallel, it could be a nice low resistance. String several in series could be useful for something. Probably most useful for things like testing the higher current ranges on meters and things that I'm working on. All right, I think I figured out probably what's going to be best for my right, my situation here. I'm going to make a probably a wooden box with an aluminum front plate and um, that's going to have a whole bunch of banana uh, sockets but also the kind with the the thumb screws and the ability to to loop a wire around the bottom of the post and so on just like you'd see on the front of most power supplies even today and arranged with an uh, inch and a half between them and then three quarter inch and a half three quarter inch and a half and that would give enough room to mount resistors in those positions and then three quarter inch centers here because that's an industry standard and that allows you to use some um, banana jumpers that are on three quarter inch centers uh, that doesn't do any good here but why would you bridge a resistor you might bridge from row to row so you could bridge that or you could bridge that and uh, by making these two the the main terminals but with no resistor in this position then I can do any number of combinations of series and parallel and the remaining positions adds up to the 17 that I have that many resistors of. I figured I would make some heavy brass comb shunts or bus bars uh, just you know cut them out of 16th inch brass and then uh, drill holes and then cut them out probably on the bandsaw or something to make these slots and then those can all be slipped on and tighten these down and connect all these together and have another one facing going that way so you can put all of these in parallel do the same thing here and the same thing here and if you don't want them all in parallel maybe you want some in series the comb can always be pulled out and moved up a few positions and then brought back or you know taken down the other direction to free up some that you don't want in a parallel arrangement um, it should be pretty flexible that way but I'd have to make six such comb shunts um, I don't have nearly enough banana posts so I'd have to buy a bag of those um, that would be a little bit expensive because good brands of those are not cheap the most expensive part would be yeah you can get a bunch of these in parallel so you want them all in parallel so I would have them like this two bust together two rows or both sides of one column bust another column bust another column bust and if the buses go all the way down to the main terminals then that's where you can plug in your test leads coming out and essentially everything will be paralleled um, or you can arrange them all in series by having short banana plug jumpers just like that that you could go diagonally and do that all the way down and then use some slightly longer ones to 
bridge across. So you would have all these in series, then bridge across to the next one, do all those in series, bridge across to the next one, and go down. Um, I would have to make the jumpers all capable of what I think is the worst case to go from maybe this position to this position. Uh, make sure they're all that long. If I have 18 of those, that would allow me any combination of series and parallel, assuming I'm using the bus bars for at least some of the parallels. Again, that's going to be a little pricey, but I might still do it. I have to look at the quality brands of those and see um, you know, how much they cost to do all of that. For the uh, banana binding posts, I was going to use a Pomona part. Those are premium parts. It's the 3750 and then dash zero for black, dash two for red, etc. But those things clock in at just under $10 each. That's really too rich. I would be spending the better part of $400 just on banana posts that ain't gonna happen for this so I needed to do something more economical but still basically have a, a similar functionality product and I realized that you know the binding posts that are used for speakers for speaker wiring are pretty comparable functionality wise to the Pomona one that is designed for use with test equipment uh, these are usually a little beefier and you know the metals used and so on maybe not quite as good because they're only intended to be hooked up occasionally not get day-to-day -day use they probably wouldn't hold up but for my occasional use of this I think it'd be fine I found this product on eBay this is the eBay listing it's the speaker amplifier terminal binding post dual two ways banana plug jack um, you get a pack of four two blacks and two reds um, what I actually got was um, I ordered ten pieces of this so I was into it for about forty dollars um, because if you buy more than that they're about four dollars per um, set what you see here and if I buy uh, 10 packs of those then I have 40 pieces which is just a couple more than I actually need uh, but they still have um, the ability to put a banana plug into them they're still able to be raised and uh, a wire stuck through the hole and then tightened down or to put a fork lug type thing into them so that, in that sense, they're very similar. But they don't have quite the slim look. These would be difficult to put, say, an alligator clip into the way a test equipment type banana um, binding post would uh, work. You normally wouldn't do that with speakers, and so they're, they're beefier. Anyway, I ordered these, and um, they came in. And uh, there they all are. Okay, here these guys are. The you know the plastic is nowhere near as good. It's not that nylon-y type of plastic that the Pomona ones would use. These are just you know injection molded thermoplastics or something like that I don't know they they won't take that kind of abuse but again it should work for the occasional use I'll put this thing to so you can stick the banana plug in there you can unscrew it and put a wire through the hole and then tighten it down on the wire or it still has this raised um, bushing there which if you put a, a fork lug in there and then tighten it down it's going to pinch 
that fork lug in there and make the connection. Then on the other side you've got um, two nuts, um, one to actually hold it in, the other one is a jam nut. And then there's a, a star type lock washer. And then two regular washers. And then finally you have the two insulating bushings. One which is fixed up here. And these um, have a little bit of a raised section. So if you drill a hole, the diameter of that raised section, and then this half has the same thing on it as the little bit of a raised bushing on here, or a raised flange, then um, you kind of sandwich the panel into that hole, and you can use different thicknesses of panel because these flanges are very shallow. They just really grip the edge of the hole. So you could go everything from, I don't know what that is, it's probably a 32nd of an inch thick panel, or you can go up to, you know, even, you know, a quarter inch thick or some ridiculous thing, and it would work fine. There's enough length on the, uh, the screw here. And then finally the end has got a, a post that you can wrap a wire around and solder it. So the only part I don't like about this is that they're probably half again as large in diameter as what I really wanted to use. And that's going to just make it a little more cumbersome with the spacing on the panel. You know, having the holes as close as they are, but this is the industry standard for spacing. So it should work. Um, and again, I'll be doing most of the connections on here using plugs and won't be needing to turn the, the, uh, the knurled part that much with my fingers. Revisiting my panel layout, um, I have to take into account the width of the half inch plywood I plan to have around the periphery, which I had designed to have enough clearance for the Pomona brand binding posts with their narrower diameter bushings, but these cheaper ones are much larger, so I have to um, expand both the X and the Y dimensions by about a quarter of an inch to give them adequate clearance. So that means I'm going to have a seven and three quarter by five and a half piece. And I have this piece of 16th inch aluminum, which I had my local fabricator cut out for me. I'd usually buy these things from the hardware store, but um, they were out. So I just called the fabrication shop I use when my own machining skills are not adequate to make parts for me and they just cut off a piece, which I'll have to cut down to the exact dimensions. It's snowing. First snow of the year. Well, first snow of the season, let's put it that way. I'm sure it snowed sometime early in the wee, uh, wee months of this year. We've already got probably a good inch of snow and it's supposed to snow through the rest of the day and the evening. Might get a couple three inches out of it. All right, I've cut out my pattern, uh, taped it to the aluminum and used my punch to punch every center of every hole including the ones around the periphery that will go into the plywood frame.
All right, I'm trying to see what the necessary diameter is here for the recess, or for the actual hole, rather, so this flange on here can go in. And it looks like it's probably metric. Let's see. Well, 12.5 millimeters. Or point point four nine one inches and that's essentially half of an inch so I can use my step drill the largest size of which is half an inch or I'd have to go through all those um, terraces there it might be better to just um, use this one here. This one I only have to go through six terraces. So I think I'll use that one. I have a piece of scrap plywood with a three-quarter inch hole bored through with a Forstner bit. And I'm going to try to um, do this just freehand. I think it'll be faster. Let's see how it works. If it looks, if it comes out Awkward, I'll use the drill press. But I'm finding out that the drill is making a slightly larger hole than I intended. Um, and it turns out the next smaller size actually fits better than um, the half inch hole, so I'm going to do that. I think it will be better to do this on the drill press. Well, the step drill, that large step drill takes such large chunks and cutting through the aluminum, it almost smears the metal more than it cuts it. Uh, so I've decided to step up to it with uh, regular drills and then use the step drill to uh, clean up the hole.
Okay, some deburring. That's not working too well. Plus I want a sharp edge on these holes, so I'm going to just trim it with my X-Acto knife. Okay, all the holes are drilled, and the plate got a slight warp to it, but that will pull out once it's um, screwed to the plywood frame. There's some scratches and blemishes on the aluminum that I'm thinking I'm going to try to just do a wire brush treatment on this. Well, I just decided to use my uh, random orbital sander to, to do this. I got the most consistent results. A nice sort of sandblast finish.
Okay, all those pieces are cut out and mitered or beveled or whatever the heck it is. Okay, just for a test fit, make sure I didn't completely screw up on the dimensions. Yep, looks like it's about right. I wanted the aluminum to come just a little bit short of the wood. And that came out appropriately. We'll check it for square. It should be square with the clamps, but sometimes things get a little out of whack. Looks like it's just about right. Okay, several hours later. Take the tension off. Okay, there's the frame, sanded. I think uh, this is the top side, it's the better looking side, even though most of it's going to be covered up with the aluminum. Alright, I've marked all the holes, which I will put pilot holes in for the screws, and I'm going to sand the corners off on this just a little bit.
All right. I've got my ball jar of um, clear semi-gloss varnish. stirrer. Alright. glove from Chuck. Usually I pour some into these little jars just so I don't have to keep the the ball jar open more than necessary. Okay. Little blocks of gin. and propped up in front of a heater fan to dry overnight and tomorrow I should start being able to do the assembly. The next morning the varnish is nearly dry except for a couple of slightly less than dry spots where the bottom had been sitting on the, the risers so I've flipped it over onto its back and then I also gave the aluminum a shot of clear uh, spray paint. So those will just uh, go during the day while I'm away. And when I get back, they should be ready for assembly. All right, ready for assembly. I'm not going to put any markings on here because it's pretty apparent um, what goes where. They're all the same. I've decided to orient the holes through the binding posts in this fashion rather than vertically because they're too close together and only the end ones you'd be able to get at the wires. 
Um, also, it makes it pretty easy this way to, I've got a couple pieces of stiff wire which between them uh, just to fit through the hole, so that helps me assure some kind of a reasonable alignment when I tighten down the, the nuts on the backs of these. Okay, with this panel assembled, the next thing to do is make the comb shunts, of which I need six. I worked out the dimensions. Um, as drawn here, they're for the Pomona, ones I was originally going to use, the binding post that is. But with these big bruisers here, I needed to adjust the dimensions a little bit, so I've marked that in. I've got a sheet of probably overkill, it's 1 16th inch thick, I think that's brass. Uh, brass is a very good conductor, frequently used in electrical contacts, and I think it should do just fine for this application, plus it's on hand, one less thing to buy. So don't have any more time today, but uh, tomorrow I'm going to get busy and probably bandsaw this thing up. Uh, drill it, slot it, polish it or sand it or wire brush it or something to give it a decent finish. cut lines and hole intersections or hole centers marked and punched.
These just hopefully need to be um, cleaned up, have the Sharpie marker erased and a little bit of sanding and deburring. And hopefully these things have a chance of fitting <laughs> on these posts. Okay, let's see. There we go. And so on. You can tighten them all down and shorten them up, short them all together. Quick sanity check here. <clears throat> Looks like that'll work. Alright, all the combs are made. I've done a little sanding along the edges, rounded the corners a little bit on the side I'd be handling the most, wire brushed them front and rear. I think they're about as good as I'm going to get them. When I sanded them, I sanded the channels out and made them slightly, very slightly flared, just to make it a little easier to uh, get them onto the posts. All right, just proof that everything fits. And as already mentioned earlier on, these combs can be removed entirely and just jumpers used between them or I can move the combs up for example if I don't want to have all of these shorted out I can move the comb up like that so it's only shorting out three or four or whatever if it gets to be less than that I'd probably just use the jumper wires instead but this thing is turning into quite the monstrosity I felt kind of silly ever since I got started on this, thinking, you know, for as little as I'm going to use this, this is a lot of effort and expense. But, once you start some projects, you just feel the need to see them through. Okay, all the soldering is done. I put a small uh, relief on the leads, each side of the resistors just to allow for any thermal expansion so it's not stressed or if the posts turn a little bit because they're not keyed into the panel that they won't uh, immediately yank hard on the resistor leads so it's just a little bit of give there and these are the tie points here which have no resistor on them alright there it is I've taken out the two metal bars 
I put a label on there saying these two are tie points. The panel is screwed down to the wooden frame. And I have felt pads at the corners. I'm going to be using um, some test lead wire off of my big roll of Pomona 6733-0, which is the black. Um, I believe this is 18 gauge, high strand count, um, silicone rubber insulated, so very soft and flexible like you want test leads to be. I'm making 18 of these short jumper leads and the each one's going to be five and a quarter inches uh, cut wire length. Here's the first of the leads or the jumpers. Just a matter of uh, stripping off about a quarter of an inch of insulation from each end, sticking it into the safety shrouds and tightening down the set screw that's in there uh, to clamp it in place and uh, let's see if it does bridge the distance I expect it to. So this is the uh, the distance I expected to be the worst case on here. It can reach from the outer to the outer row diagonally and still have a little slop in it. It can bridge across like that, but it shouldn't need to go any further than that. Um, this also allows me to put all the resistors in series if I want. Uh, certainly I can do things like this and then just do a bunch of diagonals to make them in series and then bridging one series to another. For example, this might be the last one here and it would need to get up to here to start another one. So it's certainly long enough to do that. Or worst case, I could still go over here and just, um, you know, continue up to there and start doing ones in series. So I think that should be long enough. I just need to buckle down and make another 17 of these things. All right, 18 short jumper cables. So here's one way this um, piece of equipment can be used. Just arbitrarily I have um, these resistors here all paralleled and all of these paralleled. So there's five and six and they're paralleled by the comb shunts and also by these two jumper wires bridging across the two. I have my AC access panel. The red lead comes into one end of the parallel resistors and leaves over here and goes through my fluke meter on AC amps, uh, the 10 amp range, and uh, then comes back from the meter and goes into just an unused uh, comb shunt here. It's not tied to anything. And then the other side of the AC access panel wire goes there. So um, I have a, a series power source, resistor, and meter. And I should get roughly an amp out of this um, if I give it somewhere in the area of 50 volts. So I'm going to turn on the access panel and I'm going to turn up my variac, which is my power source, and watch the meter. Wait till I get up. Well, I'm just on the shy side of one amp there. I don't want to go any higher because my AC access panel only has a one amp fuse in it 
it's probably sitting right on the edge of blowing but it is a slow blow fuse and I'm sitting there at about 45 volts so it works out right I'm getting the correct resistance um, so that's one way this could work um, I've always had problems when I'm trying to rig up something for example to test meters and so on on um, AC amps it's pretty easy for me to test low uh, DC milliamps using something like my milliamp loop tester but to test higher things I need something else and this will allow me to do higher amperage AC amps testing using my Variac for example as a source or um, using my power supply I can go into the higher DC amps as well than I could just using my um, panel here so that's that's one way where this could be useful There's a bit of warmth back here. They're not piping hot, but they're definitely, you know, they were dissipating a bit. Anyway, so this monstrosity is basically successful. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure it's worth the, the money and effort that went into it, all starting from what essentially was a almost free grab bag of power resistors but at least I put them into some kind of potential use in a decent looking package and it was a mildly entertaining project and I can store all the jumpers just by plugging them in